Aloha, my internet family. How are you? Welcome back to Practical Printing. I saw some tweets from the guys over at Protoposter the other day, and they had taken a model from Thingiverse of a really cool pineapple and turned it into an awesome planter. And that kind of got my gears turning a little bit on a fun project for something that I needed to tackle around the house. So you ready? Let's do it. So when my oldest daughter had moved out, we had broken the globe on her ceiling fan with a piece of furniture that we were trying to carry out of the room. And I needed to find a way to replace that and I couldn't find readily available sizes that fit. So when I saw this pineapple and knowing that I had some coffee HDPLA from Protopasta on hand, it seemed like the perfect filament to get a cool Maui gold looking pineapple. And that's how this guy came about. I took some very simple measurements from the remaining pieces of the globe for this top piece, modeled that in Fusion 360, appended it to the original pineapple, and I did this using very simple tools. I started with the original STL file that I downloaded from Thingiverse, and the link is in the description down below. It's an awesome model. I modeled the lip here. I used Prusa Edition Slicer, but regular Slicer will also work to merge the, uh, to s separate the body of the pineapple and take the leaf section off. Then I use Simplify 3D to stack the two together, create the top half as a spiral vase and the bottom half as a thicker piece that could go into it. So let's jump over into the software and I'll show you how this is done. Okay, we're going to start off over on Thingiverse and we are going to grab the pineapple model. I have this linked in my practical printing collection of models. There's a link to that down in the description below. This is by Yeg 3 d and it's a, uh, a really cool, neat little pineapple. So we're going to download that and set that aside, then we're going to jump over to Fusion 360. Okay, in Fusion 360, we're going to start a new drawing, then we are going to do a create sketch. I'm going to pick a plane, any plane, and then we're going to start by hitting L to do a line. We're going to draw a 15 millimeter line. I'm going to hit L to draw another line. This one we're going to make 35 millimeters, and then we're going to do a third line. That's going to be 37.5 millimeters. Now this is half the size of the globe for my ceiling fan, so you can adjust this to where you want. Let's grab these dimensions and pull them up out of the way. Now we have kind of a U shape there, or a C shape, I guess. Now we're going to go down and we're going to add a spline. And we're just going to basically connect the dots, let's click in the middle, and when you get to the top you want to double click it. I'm going to hit escape to deselect the spline tool, and that gives you like a little nice curve there for it to grab onto, which is kind of the shape of the globe on, the existing globe on my ceiling fan. If you don't need that shape, you can adjust it as appropriate for you. We're going to hit, go ahead and hit stop sketch, then we're going to go create, revolve, we're going to select the sketch, and then we're going to select the axes, and we're going to put it here, and that's going to give us our part swept all the way around. We're going to hit OK. Let's maneuver that a little bit, and so we can see what it looks like, and that's exactly what we need. So now you can go ahead and save that, and then you can also go to Make, 3D Print, and select the piece, make sure send to 3D print utility is not selected, hit OK, and then you can save it to your desktop, give it a name, I called it Lamp Lip, and click save and save it to your desktop. 
Okay, let's jump over to Prusa Edition Slicer and we're going to move on from there. We're going to start off by bringing in the pineapple model into Slicer and we're going to where is it at? I'm going to open it, go to desktop, I'm going to find our pineapple. I'm going to open it there. And what we're going to do is click on it. We're going to hit cut. We're going to say upper part. We're going to slide this up to where we want it. Roughly about there. We can zoom in on that to find out exactly where. I'm going to try to hit right about there. We're going to say the lower part, delete the upper part, and we don't want to rotate it. Then we're going to do a perform cut. And that gives us our pineapple body. Now with this, you can go ahead and do an export STL and save it to your desktop. Um, in this case, I did this already and called it pineapple body. And then we'll go over to Simplify 3D. Okay, in Simplify 3D, we're going to hit import. And the first thing we're going to do is bring in our lamp base that we designed in Fusion 360. We're going to let that drop that right in the center. We're going to hit import again. This time we are going to bring in our pineapple body that we just did. And note it drops it right in the center, right on top of it. So now what we're going to do is double click that to open up the adjustment window. I'm going to give it a Z offset of 15, which places it on top of our base. And then for this one, we're going to scale it up to about 270. We can rotate that to make sure that it's centered on that base nice and even and that everything lined up. We're going to hit done. Now we're going to go ahead and set up our process for the base, which is going to give us our main area of focus. I'm doing this on the Prusa Mark III, so I already have that selected in PLA. So I'm going to set my layers on the tab to zero top and bottom layers and three parameters. And then I'm going to set it to zero infill. That will give us three parameters. Uh, three perimeters around the section that's going to go up inside the fan and get grabbed so it's a little bit stiffer. We're also going to set our support to generate support from the build platform only and we're going to hit OK. OK, now we're going to go up to Tools, Variable Settings Wizard. We're going to set this to about 17 millimeters. And I guess we could just type that in which gives us a little bit of a lip or an overhang. Um, it gets it a little bit taller than that lip overhang right there. We're going to add a location. We're going to hit split process. And we're going to edit our second process by setting it to spiral vase mode and one perimeter. And we are going to turn off support. Now you see what it did on the advanced tab over here is it tells it to start printing at 17 millimeters. And the first process it told to stop printing at 17 millimeters. So we get a con smooth, continuous flow. I'm going to go ahead and go over here to prepare print. I'm going to do a select all, continuous printing layer by layer, hit OK. It's going to parse out the G code and give us a view here like this. So let's go ahead and view what this looks like. Everything looks good, so let's go ahead and save our tool paths to disks, send it over to the printer, and we'll meet back here after that.
So this came out perfectly off the printer. As you can see in the pictures that I showed, it fits perfectly onto the ceiling fan. You know, if you could imagine, short of spray painting those fan blades green, picture the fan blades as kind of the stem of the pineapple just on top of it, and it kind of, kind of flows with the pineapple. Um, it seemed to be a great solution. Now here's the catch. I use the pineapple vase for this. This concept would work with almost any vase that you could find on Thingiverse, and you could very simply turn it into a lamp globe using the same techniques. So that's it for today. If you're not subscribing, feel free to hit the subscribe button down below and ring that bell so that you can get notified when future videos like this are released. If you're shopping at Matter Hackers for protopasta filament or anything else, or you're doing any shopping on Amazon, I do have affiliate links in the description down below. I'd appreciate if you would consider using those. It doesn't cost you anything extra, but it helps fund me doing fun projects like this. And a special thank you to all of my patrons over on Patreon that help fund the channel to keep things going. So much mahalo to you guys. And that's it. We'll see you next time on Practical Printing. Aloha.